morning everybody we're in Eau Claire Wisconsin we gotta unload this freight that I picked up yesterday in Manitoba unload it here and then run down the road to Mawson Wisconsin pick up some utility trailers put them onto my trailer tie them down secure them and race on back home that's the plan for today let's get to it spots for trucks. It's amazing. So I've got to deliver just down the street. Shouldn't take too long to deliver as long as you know they're ready. It's not lunchtime or anything so I'm expecting it to go pretty quick. We have about a two hour drive down to Mauston after that. All right, so we got here. We're in our unloading position. I'm gonna get all my straps and equipment off. We'll get unloaded. And then I have received my confirmation. I'm headed to Mauston. I think I've told you that already, right? I keep telling you the same thing like 20 times. Now the load is over there. Off my trailer, not my responsibility. Been signed for. So now when they were loading it, they got a bunch of gravel on my deck. I'm not impressed, but it happens. It happens. Can't really help it. It was a mud blot, remember? So I gotta sweep all this off because if I don't, when I go down the highway, these are gonna fall off the trailer and go through someone's windshield or into someone's windshield. I would hope that a rock like this wouldn't go through, but you never know. You don't want it hitting people's windshields and then they get all mad and it's your fault. I mean, I don't know what would happen in that situation. Who would be at fault i would assume ethically and morally i would be at fault because i knew that there was rocks on my deck and i didn't clear them off and it damaged someone's vehicle legally speaking i don't know who would be at fault because if a, rock, if a truck throws a rock at you right like it's not the truck's fault it happens but if it's because of negligence and you can prove that and then they got you right and then they got you so we'll clear this off here so that we don't got to deal with that. I got this riser right here. I didn't need it for this last load. I'm going to need it for my next load. I'm picking up those trailers. And oh, I also figured out what was going on with my tires. Remember this inside tire we had patched. It had a hole in it. Got it patched and then uh, it started wearing a lot faster. You can see this already. Uh, you see how that tire has worn? And look at the tire right beside it. You can see the difference, right? I found out why. Now when the guy patched that tire, he didn't check the pressure of all my other tires. All my tires are set to 100 PSI. He filled this one to 110 PSI. So that tire was running at 10% more P uh, 10%, well I guess it would be, at 10 more PSI than this tire. And that's why it was wearing down faster. So I leveled them out now, so that problem should be fixed. So uh, they are a little bit that one is a little bit more worn than this one now. Hopefully they'll even out over time and it won't get worse. But that was the problem. Tire pressure and a lot of you in the comments section had it right. So make sure when you get your tires fixed or replaced that the guy who's fixing your tire balances the air pressure to the tire beside it. If this one's at 100, that one should be at 100. Costly mistake. And it wasn't my fault. And there's nothing I can do about it now, right? Because it's weeks down the road and I've already put like 10,000 kilometers or 10,000 miles on them already since it's been patched. So next time I'll just remind the guy who's changing my tires, make sure you check all the air pressure because they're set to 100, not 110. It was late at night and I, I, 
I didn't think of it. I didn't think of telling him. So maybe it's partly my fault. Maybe it's partly his because the standard for a lot of tires is 110 PSI. I run mine a little bit lower. gives me a little bit more traction, especially in the snow in the winter time. I mean, there's been studies shown that you can actually make tires last longer by having lower PSI, like 85 to 90 PSI in your tires. And that sounds like heresy to a lot of old timer truck drivers because they needed at least 100 or 110 in their mind, right? But I'm referring to an article from trucknews.com and I read it just the other day and uh, there's been several fleets that have actually lowered the air pressure in their drive tires to 85. That's lower than I would want to go, but uh, they've found that their tires wear more evenly, have more traction on the road because more of the tire surface touches the road, right? And they last longer. They're getting four, uh, 500 to 800,000 kilometers. That's like, what, three, 400,000 miles? 500,000 miles off these tires? It's crazy, right? I don't think these will go that long. These are cheap Chinese tires. I'm, they're not gonna last that long, but that's okay, because they're cheap. They don't have to last as long. But uh, I can get a few hundred thousand kilometers out of them anyways, right? And uh, so I run them at 100. Right there. Uh, the studies have shown that with the weights that we haul here in North America, uh, we can get away with as low as 70 PSI in our drive tires, but I wouldn't recommend you go that low. That's really low, but it's not the tires that hold up your load. It's the air inside the tires. And legally speaking, if you look at the specifications of most tires, not all tires, but most tires, you only need about 70 PSI to hold up the loads that we're carrying. I just, I wouldn't recommend going that low, but you know, Around 100 is where I usually have mine. Around 100, 110. I'm trying 100 out with these tires, see how that goes, you know. I'll keep reading, keep studying and uh, researching, and reading other people's research, and seeing what works for people, what doesn't work. And well, from, what I've, from what I've all read and understood, I felt comfortable having my tires at about 100 PSI. And uh, as we can see, if one is a bit higher, then the rest, that one's gonna wear down really fast. Good thing it's a cheap tire. Otherwise that would have been an even more expensive lesson to learn. There's always lessons to learn and in trucking, every lesson is very expensive. I wonder what happened. It seems every other week, the US flags are at half staff. Do I turn left here? Yes, I do. Have to turn left because no trucks straight forward. Okay. Continue on this road for 11 kilometers. ticking and there's a fly in here again how every day every day i'm gonna get you oh i'm gonna get you where'd you go every day there's a fly in here just one i kill it like that and then before you know it 
it's back in here. Like my windows are open now, it might have flown in. But even if I leave the windows closed all day, suddenly there's a fly in here. Do you guys have flies in your truck all the time too? Is it just me? Do they like me? I don't smell, I promise. I'm gonna make a sharp left turn here to get out of here. Karen's calling it a U-turn. It's actually just a sharp left. Gotta get onto that road there where that motorcycle is. Take it nice and wide over here. Minnesota. It's a good place to spend the night. There was one spot available for Trucker Josh. Guess who took it? Trucker Josh. It's the next morning. We're going to continue on. Uh, we drove all the way from uh, Mawson, Wisconsin, all the way up here last night. We got here really, really late. Really, really late. So, a little bit of a later start today, but we only have five hours left to go back to our yard. So, there's the good news. So we'll head over there to the yard, we'll drop this trailer, we'll head to our shop, we'll tuck old blue in for the night, and we're gonna go home for a couple days. To pack, <laughs> pretty much. Actually, <coughs> excuse me, this weekend is Canadian Thanksgiving, so happy belated Canadian Thanksgiving to all of you out there, my Canadian friends and family. I know in the US, your Thanksgiving's in November. It's already winter here at that time, so we do our Thanksgiving a month early because our seasons are a little bit uh, different than yours. So happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hope it was a good one. We got a couple of family gatherings to attend this weekend, lots of food to eat. It's going to be good. And we got to get back to work because we got to make some money. We got to pay for our new house. We're moving in a few weeks still, so we got just a few weeks to pack up and get ready. Well, let's continue on down the road. We need to get out there. It is windy today. Windy, windy. We're going to test out my load securement. I'm not worried. 
99.9999999% sure everything is tied down tight enough that it's not going to blow away. <laughs> Let's get going. So this is, uh, like I was saying, the Big Chief truck stop. I've stopped here many times over the years. It's one of my favorite places to stop. It's got a nice little cafe inside here. Fuel pumps at the back off to my left. Quite a bit of parking in the back here. It's a gravel lot, so you are at the mercy of drivers parking straight and not taking up more space than they need to. So as long as everybody parks properly, you can fit quite a few trucks in here. It's a little cold out. It's nine degrees Celsius. It's getting cold. What is nine degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? Nine degrees Celsius is equivalent to 48.2 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where we're sitting right now. Definitely had to turn on the bunk heater last night. Got a little bit chilly. So earlier in this vlog, yesterday turn for right me. Turn left again. Take the entrance to the right in 80 meters. As Karen interrupts me, like usual. We had a pretty uneventful night. Like I said, driving late into the night. Drove through Minneapolis, wasn't a lot of traffic, it was great. I like night driving. It's quieter, right? But it does eat into the next day. I wanted an easy day today. I didn't want to have a long day of work and then get home all tired and no energy. This way, I only got five hours to drive, drop the trailer and go home, I have lots of energy. Interstate 94, westbound. Heading toward North Dakota. cold biting winter air it's just getting sucked in here got that wonderful wind from the north just oh, oh, oh okay it's always those first couple of weeks fall into winter where the cold hits us hard then after about two weeks we're like oh you know what <laughs> it's actually not that bad then the rest of winter is fine it's just that first bit is like oh so happy with summer. I'm in Morris, Manitoba, on the Canadian side again. Got my Timmy's. Very happy. Let's give it the taste test. <coughs> oh, oh. Mm, decent. Smells good. Hot. Yep, it's hot. Good. Yeah, it's good. 
It's only 8 degrees Celsius. I mean, what's 8 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 8 degrees Celsius is 46.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Not even that cold yet. It's going to get a lot colder before it gets warmer, so can't complain. Alright, let's get back out here. Alright, alright, alright. I'm excited to go home. It's going to be a weekend of Thanksgiving. Going to my family's tomorrow, going to Britt's family's the day after, or is it the other way around? No, wait. I think we're going to Britt's family's tomorrow, and my family the day after. That's right. Lots of eating ahead this weekend. Oh, oh. And I'm hungry. By the time we move into our new house, pretty much all the leaves will be gone. Except for this tree. Look on the right here. That tree's still green. What a trooper. Other trees have lost all their leaves already. Thanks. Yeah, we'll have to wait until next summer to enjoy summer in our backyard, but that's okay. We can enjoy winter. Winter isn't the worst thing. Winter can be fun. It's just when it gets down to the deep freeze. Last two weeks of January, first two weeks of February where it gets down below minus 30. That's not as fun, but the rest of winter isn't actually that bad. Your body gets used to it pretty quickly. That was a windy day. That was nuts. I haven't driven through wind like that in quite a while. Must mean the seasons are changing or something. Feels, you just feel it in the air. Something's happening. Something's happening. Might be the fact that all the trees are losing their leaves too. Might be that. But something I can feel it in my bones. Something's changing out there. Ah, so we got old blue in the shop here. Since the weather was so bad today, I didn't bother washing it today because it would have been just as dirty, if not more dirty. Uh, let's see, I got everything. Oh, let's take a few things with me here. I think that's everything I need. Uh. Okay. Oh, did I turn that light off? That's why I went in there. I went in there to turn that light off. Oh, I don't know. Turn... Yes. Okay. The light in the sleeper's off. <laughs> I can't remember anything. Okay, it's time to go home, everybody. It's been fun. So this vlog included all the way from Mauston, Wisconsin. No, actually, from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, down to Mauston, back all the way home. So about a 1,300-kilometer jaunt or seven eight hundred mile jaunt over two days i'm ready to go home how about you old blue yeah thanks for taking along with me as usual we will make another vlog tomorrow or the next day we make new vlogs almost every day so if you want go down below the video make sure you're subscribed because we're doing something different and well actually our next video, we're going to be going to Kenora again and then headed down to Brainerd and then down to Minneapolis. So maybe it's something similar, but every day is different. And I'd love it if you join us. So don't forget to subscribe down below. Be safe out there, everybody. And when you're on the road, remember, please drive safe.